So after laying the groundwork in our protocols, I'm going to talk about those things that are basically my advice points. So tricks, not so much, a lot of tips as far as how to really do a thorough carotid evaluation. So my advice, here are some posed advice things that we're going to take one by one. Take the exam, as you may have already determined from the protocol lecture, as far caudally and as far cranially as possible. So don't just lay the probe down and get what's in direct view. Tip and go up as far as you can and caudally as far as you can. As you might expect from my lecture as well, show areas of plaque long and transverse, optimized. So taking a moment to make this a true duplex examination. And I've seen people do just color Doppler, sagittal view through things. You will get an amount of information, but you're going to get more if you actually do a full examination from different points of view and different planes. Change the probe position relative to the sternocleomastoid muscle. This is very important as well, and the, you can get an anterior, a lateral to the muscle, and posterior to the muscle view as needed to delineate, again, how much disease is present. It may not be hemodynamically significant, or not yet, but knowing where the plaque is, not just seeing there's plaque on the right side or plaque on the left, where? Where are those plaques located? Use the line of sight with that Doppler insonation line of sight that best suits how that vessel is lying in the angulation of the vessel. If you try to always stay with the same line of sight, and, and as machines are set up more and more now to have protocols where it will actually engage the next frame that you would normally get with a line of sight already built in, there are times where you need to change it. And I'll give you examples for each of these. Importantly, stressing to you that you need to walk, the technologist needs to walk the sample volume through. They do not need to record 20 images or a whole sweep for the physician, but they need to walk through and make sure that they are seeing, the, the taking the sample volume through and listening carefully to the Doppler characteristics, the signal characteristics to know when they're getting good information or not. This is something that in the days of still images or even a video loop recording, we don't generally have the ability to record the Doppler signal, as was done in the dinosaur days of recording on videotape, where you could hear that Doppler signal and know when you're getting kind of that sweet spot of, of a good 